Welcome to the Brother Henry and You Show. I am your host, Henry Harris. Hello, everybody. This is Catherine Toon, and welcome to the Brother Henry and You show. It's always an honor uh, to be on the show. And today, I'm going to be talking about the, in, the value and esteem of women loving ourselves. Uh, so uh, women are going to be really blessed. And, you know, if you're a guy and you're watching this, well, like more power to you. <laughs> uh, it's really helpful to uh, try to understand the heart of other people that are different than you. And, you know, men and women are not the same. We have, a, you know, we have a lot in common, a ton in common, more in common than we don't have in common. But viva la difference, right? Uh, it's it's great. And one of the things that you know I discussed in the last uh, show that I did regarding women is how God values women, how He values His daughters. And this is a real thing because if you were brought up in a religious uh, environment that taught you that the evils of the world were because Eve tempted Adam. Um, you really start out with original shame. And uh, that is not how it is. <laughs> um, and God wants all his kids free. And we also talked about how with the fall, uh, the generally... Um, one of the big things that happened was that men uh, began the domination of women. Um, and now women are not blameless. So I'm going to, you know, we, this is fair and balanced, <laughs> um, uh, which is the thing, right? Uh, we still have, you know, men are at the top of everything and women are just, and we're making progress and that's great, but it's still a thing. It's still very much a thing even if you're in our more enlightened culture or whatever. Uh, and um, saying it isn't, is just not, you know, and, and there are abuses other, on, on the other end. And women generally, because the only way they, they weren't gonna duke it out with men and, and win from a physical standpoint. And then the political socioeconomic systems uh, were in favor of men, all of that. Uh, and so the power uh, was generally in man's men's hands. And then you had the church that came along and labeled women as temptresses and all this kind of stuff. And just a, just a ton of pain. Um, and then women, uh, because women fell to quote unquote, had fallen ways of being too, generally had to resort to other things to maintain some power and influence. And sometimes that would just be uh, manipulation, seduction, um, that kind of thing. Um, and it's still a thing. And so we, we all have issues. So let's just own our issues and we'll all be great. Okay. But today, uh, I am going to be talking about loving ourselves and esteeming ourselves. I love women. I love men too. I just love people. I think people are great. <laughs> and I love my sisters. And I'm so excited to link arms with my sisters. And I'm so excited to link arms with my brothers. We get to do that because we're called to love one another. We're called to, uh, to honor one another. And we, when, when one of us comes up higher, we all come up higher. And so God is always in the win-win. And so today I get to minister to my sisters and, and mothers and um, daughters uh, and 
that and that's just a joy so we're going to talk this is going to be a little bit more uh experiential a little more um touchy feely so get your touchies and your feelings feelies th sensors out <laughs> uh because this is going to be lovely and guys you get to join right in because really this is about all of god's kids um uh, we're focusing on the women because it has been problematic and the thing is if you if you're in uh you know if you're a fish uh you're really not aware of the water you swim in and you may be really good. It's like, oh, my fin has got some resistance. You know, there's something there, but you really don't have the full gestalt of what the water is. And so thank you guys for being uh, the, the gentleman, for being uh, sensitive in things, but understand there's things that you're just not gonna pick up on if you're a guy. And that's not because you're evil or bad. Uh, that's just because you haven't experienced it. And you know, the things, the guys have experienced that I'm just gonna be like, okay, I'm hearing what you're saying, but I don't get it. <laughs> or I don't really see it, um, but it is a thing. And ladies, we are we we are called to forgive, uh, and and set boundaries. You know that's good. And guys, you as well. Um, uh, so you know, don't burn your bra unless it's uncomfortable, and get a one that fits better. But I'm just saying, we are called to forgive and all of that. So let's love one another. Let's do the Jesus thing and love one another, and let's all come up higher. But one of the ways that needs to happen. One of the things that needs to happen uh, in um, uh, coming up higher and loving one another is actually to love ourselves and to esteem ourselves and to see our value. Because so much of abuse that happens, happens because the ones that are being abused either really don't have power. I mean, if you're a kid, you're just kind of screwed. I mean, I'm sorry. It just is what it is. And, and healing needs to happen later. And, you know, a lot of us have been there. Um, but if you're a woman, an adult, and there's still issues that are going on, and if you're, you know, if, if you are being hit on, if you're being patronized, if you're all of that, um, well, a lot of how people treat you is going to reflect, be reflected by how you see yourselves. And I, I guarantee you in my, in the days when I had lots of insecurities and I grew up very honestly with a lot of conflict about the male female thing. I mean, I, I grew up in an incestuous house. Okay. That's going to mess that up a lot. Okay. Um, but on one hand we were, they were supposed to be, you know, we're, we're feminists and we're, um, you know, pro women, all that kind of thing. And then you're using women and it's so confusing, <laughs> right? And all of that. And so I had a lot of damage and a lot of stuff to navigate in the male female thing um, and loving myself as a woman and not feeling that being a woman, I was inherently uh, shameful or something like that. Um, happily, I'm really good. <laughs> I, that is not a thing in my world anymore, but it took a lot of healing. It took a lot to learn how to love myself as a woman, as, as a girl, as a woman um, with all that. And then I was in a, a male dominated profession and that's a thing. And, you know, it's interesting because medicine, I mean, I, in, in, I, I was, went to an Ivy league college and we were the first year medical school. Okay. Uh, we had the first year that there were more women than men in the class. So that was a real, it was like a groundbreaking uh, year. But I will say this, that far and away, the guys, if in, in all levels of leadership, the guys um, were far and away. They were the heads of departments. They were, you know, all of that. Um, outstripping the women. And so there's just been a lot of growth. And I grew up under that. And that was a thing. And there were times that I'd be patronized because I was a woman or hit on or like, you know what, the guys aren't having to deal with this, you know, right. Um, and so, you know, um, and so we, we do forgive, but we also do boundaries. And then we also grow in our um, being comfortable in our own skin. And if you're a woman, you have a female skin. Well, get down with your bad self. That's awesome. God adores you as his daughter. And so, but getting comfortable in that, but not in the place where we are 
having to flaunt ourselves. Listen, I, um, I don't have goods to sell. Okay. Not happening. <laughs> and so I want you to be able to love and honor yourself where you don't have to sell your goods. Okay. And, and in, in this, um, in our society, I mean, you know, you got it, you flaunt it. Well, you know what? Flaunt it in the proper places. That's just, uh, this is just me talking to you and you do whatever you want to do. But I, I just feel that um, if we want to be respected and honored for something other than um, other than our bodies and sex, then um, uh, we don't need to um, sell our wares, okay? Um, be, and that's not actually very honoring to the guys either, because if they're not supposed to be lusting after us, well, let's just not, you know, so let's, let's handle ourselves. And it's not your fault if someone lusts after you, okay? They're responsible for themselves. But what I am saying is, you know, don't, don't put stumbling blocks in front of men. That's extra, that's whatever. But it's part of being comfortable in your own skin and valuing yourself and valuing yourself, okay? Um, so that was extra. I wasn't planning on saying that, but it came, there it went. It was right there. <laughs> I can get all the angry mail now. That's all right. Um, but let's talk about loving ourselves. Shall we do that? Because that's so good. Now, number one, we got to realize that love comes from one source and we are not the source. God is love. And so that's where all love comes from ultimately. And so, uh, but we are conduits. And so how we learn to love ourselves is letting God love through us a lot of times. And so as you are engaging with God, which I hope you're doing on a regular basis, because he's, oh my goodness, the most intoxicating, life-giving, funny, safe, healing, happy, brilliant, fun, creative, masterful ugh, person on the planet. I hope you're engaging with him a lot, particularly in the areas that struggle to love yourself. And that's not a male female issue. That's just a human issue because there's a lot of men that struggle with loving themselves and being comfortable in your own skin, right? So um, let me start to unpack this because we're going to have to receive from God and his love to be able to love well, because some of us have been so damaged, have been so hurt. We just have no clue, no grid for what that looks like. So guess what? Um, if that's the case, I'm so sorry that you weren't loved well, or maybe you were abused or all that, but God is able to insert grids. He's masterful at that. He's a master programmer, deprogrammer and reprogrammer, right? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So let's talk about God who is love so that that can open up a space for you to receive him that way and then start to love yourself because what you love, you will value. We're talking about esteem. We're talking about loving yourself. And let me say this. That loving yourself is crucial, okay? Um, that's, that doesn't mean self-indulgence, you know, that doesn't mean um, um, pride. No, that means true love that values and honors and, and sees worth. And as you do that, ladies, um, people will treat you better. Because it's amazing what I, I don't allow in my world now that I was trampled over um, with such damage because I didn't have proper boundaries, right, before. Because I just basically thought I was worthless, okay. Um, and that was very much having to do with the sexual arena with um, having had incest. And, you know, you just kind of don't have a boundary. Like, what's the, how, how do you spell boundaries, right? So you can be taught and you can love yourself. I love being me. I love being me. I hope you love being you um, because you should, you should. So let's talk about, I don't mean should as in a task. 
I mean, you're worth it. Hey, listen, this is better than a L'Oreal commercial, baby. You are so worth it, right? Okay, so let's go to Ephesians 1, 4 through 5, Passion Translation. Even as in his, we're talking about God, love, he chose you, me, actually picked you out for himself as his own. I pick you. I pick you. I pick you. <laughs> you just so did. In Christ, before the foundation of the world, that we should be wholly consecrated and set apart for him, blameless in his sight, even above reproach before him in love. So you were united to Christ before the foundation of the world. I don't get it either. I mean, like the, my, my, okay. <laughs> right. I and mean, that's like, it's mind, mind boggling. Right. But I'm happy with it. I don't have to be able to get my head fully around it because it's how it is. You were so valued that God had to secure, secure you before the foundation of the world. And he didn't ask your opinion about it. <laughs> he didn't ask your vote. It's like, no, no, I'm securing you. We can talk about it later, but I've already secured you just to let you know. And he did it so that you were consecrated, um, set apart, blameless in his sight, original innocence, right? Before him in love. He, he didn't do it. You're his love project, right? You're his love workmanship. We're going to talk about that. Um, verse five, for he for, for ordained us, destined us, planned in love for us to be adopted, revealed as his own children through Jesus Christ in accordance with the purpose of his will because it pleased him and was his kind intent. He was happy about it. <laughs> he didn't create you. Like, oh my God. Okay, me. Okay, I can do this. I, I'm love. I've got to love him and grit his teeth. No, he did it in love, in his delight. You know, I say this a lot, but it bears repeating. And that's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were other giving love before the foundation of the world, who had so much love that they exploded in a race of children that looked just like him in their own flavor. And if you're a woman today, it's a female flavor. Glorious. Yeah. Um, see, God values his kids, all his kids. Yeah. If you're confused about um, the um, some of the doctrinal stuff and quote unquote original sin or um, women staying silent of the church or sticking a doily on your head or all this, what, all the weird stuff that, you know, those problematic passages. I, I, I did a very brief summary um, of them in the message before this. So you'll want to go back and listen to that. But I want you to sit with and allow yourself to revel in the fact that you've been chosen as a daughter. God is so much esteem for his daughters and his sons but we're talking about the daughters today, right? And that's you. He wants you kind of like the cat with the cream, just fat, happy, and sassy, <laughs> knowing you're loved and adored and resting in him because he's that good and he's so wild about you so that maybe you can love yourself. Absolutely. You were designed for it, okay? Sometimes that takes a lot of healing because we have self-hatred, we have shame, we have, um, and sometimes we act out of um, broken places and do awful things, okay? That's what forgiveness is about. That's, you know, we need to own our stuff because we are powerful. So if you've done sinful behavior, ugly things, well, you need to own it, clean up your mess as best you can and forgive yourself, receive forgiveness, forgive yourself and keep on trucking, um, but also um, uh, start to deal with some of the brokenness in there because 
sinful behavior comes out of a fallen mindset and um, all of that. And, and that can very much be um, all wrapped up in uh, very particular issues having to do with gender and um, sexual issues. I mean, we, we have stuff, don't we? Yeah. And then sometimes because we've been treated poorly, we've been used, abused, whatever, um, we, we start to hate ourselves because we figure there's something so wrong with me. I did, must have done something. I must be so evil that this happened to me and it's my fault. And some people are happy to say it was your fault. <laughs> you know, we got a lot going on. Okay. But you can be healed and, 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 and learn to live that and love yourself. You know, a, a woman or a man who loves themselves, who is comfortable in their skin, has so much to contribute, has so much to contribute. So it's not selfish to love yourself. It's very important to love yourself. We're supposed to love our neighbors as ourselves. So if you're doing a crappy job loving yourself, eventually you're not going to be able to, to love others as well, right? Um, you know, it, it's when people that struggle with self-hatred they're hard on other people, okay? If you have an inner critic uh, that rips you up one side down the other, ask me how I know, I booted that puppy out, but it took a, it took a while, okay? Um, but you'll tend to be really critical with other people, right? So attending to our inner worlds is crucial and that God is well able to heal that gender issue or not a gender issue, okay. Let's go to Ephesians 2.10, Passion Translation. We have become his poetry, a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he gave each of us. For we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one, even before we were born. God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we would do to fulfill it. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Okay. We have become his poetry. The, the word that's used most often in uh, other translations is the word workmanship. You are God's workmanship, his work of art, his masterpiece. Okay. His, um, he crafted you. Oh, he, he, every detail down to your eyelashes and um, your smile and your funny laugh and um, the shape of your body and all of these different things. He was like, oh man, did such a great job, <laughs> right? He delighted in crafting you. The word workmanship is the word poema. Ding, da, ding, ding. Poema is translated as a product such as a fabric, literally or figuratively, a thing that is made, workmanship. And um, one, of the, um, one of the means is the fabric. Now, number one, you are a poem to the world. See, God didn't, didn't um, uh, you know, make a chemical formula to the world. No, you are a poem to the world. And as you're unveiled, that poem is unveiled because your greatest contribution is going to come out of the place of who you are, okay? As a woman, as a man, right? Okay. Um, the, uh, the concept of poem as a fabric, you are literally cut out of the same bolt of fabric as God himself. God is love. You're made in the image and likeness of love, right? Uh, you know, the Lord once said to me, he said, Catherine, you're the fabric of my delight, right? Now that's not just a Catherine thing, but totally is a Catherine thing. Happy about that. <laughs> but you take it for yourself because you're the fabric of his delight. And if you come in a feminine flavor, rock on baby. If you come in a masculine flavor, rock on baby, right? It is your thing. And you were created to shine in that. And God, um, you know, God created you for a purpose um, to be the person that you are, right? 
Love always sets you free to be you. Your you-ness has already been established. So really what it is, it's an unveiling of who um, you are. And that's what the that's what the Lord is doing with his kids. One of the one of the concepts of being transformed or transfigured is to be unveiled. When Jesus went up to the Mount of Transfiguration, he was unveiled. And there is this glory that, you know, everyone, blah, 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 right, you know, <laughs> but that's you. You've got that. You're chock full of all that glory. And as you are unveiled in the way that you've been crafted in the way of your original design, um, that is your greatest contribution to the world. That's why trying to want to, it's great to um, admire other people like, oh man, I, I want to do that hairstyle or I want to do, you know, whatever. Great. Have fun with it. Okay. But I'm saying you be you and you spend time finding who that is and you value that. Um, you're not less than. Um, you are every much as valuable as any child on the planet. Absolutely. Any of God's child. Um, and you being you, you know, great thing about you being you in your feminine flavor and your masculine flavor is that you really don't need to work at it. It's like you, you are, there you go. <laughs> so the hardest part is figuring out who that is, but that's a glorious process of discovery and unveiling and engaging with God in that he's able to tell you exactly what that is. Like who, who, wow, right? You see, you don't need to be afraid that if God unveils you, you'll be like, oh my God, don't do it. There's something so ugly in there. No, honey, that's a lie. That's a lie. That just needs to be healed. Okay. You are gorgeous because you're in the image and likeness of the most lovely person in the planet in your flavor, in your feminine flavor, in your masculine flavor, right? You are all that in a bag of chips. And, and God, God said, which is why it's so important to see God as he is, because until you see God as he is, you will not be able to see you as you are. So he's unveiled to you. And one of the important things that's, that needs to be unveiled is the fact that he doesn't prefer one gender over another. He doesn't favor the guys and he doesn't favor the girls, right? He's about all his kids and he's delighted in his daughters and he's delighted in his sons. He just, Yeah. <laughs> and you get to be that. And because of his delight, you can start to love yourself. So whatever does not love yourself, that just needs to be healed. It's a healing issue. Okay. So if they're lies, I'm evil, I'm shameful, I'm dirty, I'm, um, you know, sinful, what, you know, whatever the lie, I'm, I'm ugly. I'm what a liar. What's <laughs> a liar? So God gets to minister in all those places and he can. So do what you need to do to heal your heart with that. Um, so God, because you were so valuable, had to secure you before he sent you to planet Earth. Love that. It just made me happy. Right? Because you're that valuable. And so you don't have the right. You have the free will, but you don't have a justifiable right not to love yourself because God loves you so much. So you not loving yourself, not, not tracking with your worth and value. It, he kind of takes, God showed this to me one time because I, I struggled with this so much for honest reasons, like ding, 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 ding right? Okay. <laughs> okay. But every time I would say something mean to myself or hate myself or despise myself or all of that, right? I mean, he literally showed me one time, Kathy, you know, when you do that, he just said, it's like, you just take it and you stick it in my heart, right? Because why, when I hurt myself, I hurt the one who loves me. I thought like, Ooh, okay. Right. And I mean, it wasn't like he's mad. It's just, it hurt him. When we hurt ourselves, when we don't love ourselves, it hurts him. You know, he gave us one commandment to love as he loves. And guess what? That includes you. And when you love yourself, you have capacity to love others. As a matter of fact, you can be relaxed in your own skin. So you don't have to worry about yourself. You don't have to be so, oh my God, insecure. Right. That was me for such a long time. I've been delivered. Yay. But right. So. With that, you get to be comfortable in your own skin. And in that place, you get to um, 
uh, contribute in your highest capacity. When you're constantly looking at yourself, well, how's my hair? Oh, well, I said that. What did they think about that? Oh, well, you know, did I insult them? Oh, well, they probably think I'm stupid. Oh, well, you know, I mean, just the stupid stuff, things that go on in our minds like crazyville, right? Okay, right? Well, that is not contributing. That is all worried about fear of man. And, and you don't contribute when you're insecure and fearful of what other people think. And, you know, one of the nice things about getting older um and i'm in my 50s and um it's so good it just gets better and better because i am so comfortable with my skin i'm like happy <laughs> and um you can be too right um and that's just so amazing you know when the person of love defines you to you that definition will be lovely because he created you to look just like him in your favor. So who are you not to love yourself? Now, let me give you some tips. <laughs> We're talking about worth and value, loving yourself, esteeming yourself. Okay. One of the things that helped me a lot, because I had these mortifying, like, fillet yourself open critics and those were internalized. And I got it honestly um, for a lot of reasons. Um, and I can do a lot of finger pointing, but like it's forgiven. So, you know, whatever. But I got it for honest reasons. And um, and I was so driven and perfectionistic and performance and I had so much shame and self-hatred and I mean, you name it. Okay. And so, and so I was driven, 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 and I just fillet myself and it just, that was wrong. <laughs> and so eventually I got some clues. I started connecting enough with God that I started to realize that it mattered what I said to myself. And so when those programs would start to play and I'd start to feel that mortification, um, whatever, I would go to the mirror and I'd look in my eyes, I'd say, it's okay, Catherine, you'll do better next time. And just that little thing, suddenly I was on my side and I was starting to comfort myself. I was starting to reframe what I was allowing uh, to be said to myself. Now, let me say this. I had to spend a lot of time. Um, I got counseling. I, I got a lot of ministry. And I spent a lot of time with the Lord in my places of pain that were the darkest, um, most sh shame ridden, um, you know, uh, shattered places um, and rejected, abandoned, blah, blah, blah. Okay. All of that. Um, and I spent a lot of time and, you know, God uh, transformed those places. So those, those are now places of glory because that's what he does. <laughs> <laughs> right. He takes our darkest and he flips it around and makes something beautiful. And those places are beautiful, glorious places. And your places can be beautiful, glorious places. And I found some things out about myself that are pretty amazing. And he wants you to find things out about yourself that are dang amazing. Right. Because of course they are. You're in the image and likeness of the most amazing person in, in the cosmos. And you look just like them in your flavor. So no one else gets to have your flavor. You get to have your own flavor. And that's breathtaking, one of a kind flavor that God crafted as a poem before the foundation of the world. And that gets to be you. The other thing is um, I, I started falling out of the habit of like critiquing everything, like, and finding the one thing that was wrong and just obsessing over it. Right. It's just crazy what we do. Um, and I also started to get a voice to other people with what I allowed them to treat me. So I started to develop boundaries. So when people were being disrespectful I didn't jump down their throat and rip out their gizzard. Okay. That's probably not lovely. Okay. But I did say, you know what? That was actually really disrespectful. I'm sure you didn't mean that, but so until you can be respectful, we're just going to end this conversation. And then I'd leave or hang up. 
or whatever. And so I trained people how they could treat me. And it was really interesting because the more, the better I treated myself, the better people would treat me. And so there's things, you know, that I know happen in people's world that just do, do not happen in my world because it's, that's just not allowed. Why? Because I know who I am. And when you know who you are, um, people respect you, people honor you because you honor yourself. And so you start to get out of this vicious cycle, right? I hate myself. People treat me like crap. I feel like a piece of crap. So I let people treat me like crap. So I feel like more crap. And, you know, I mean, get off the merry-go-round and you can get into a blessed cycle where things get better and better and better. And you draw things to, and you draw people in your life that treat you respectfully as they should. Excuse me, you're a daughter or a son. (laughs) I've got a mixed audience here. Um, So, right. So the honor that God has for his daughters, I'm speaking to the daughters and I I take this as a son, right. As well, if you're a son um, is immeasurable. He is, Ooh, he's about his daughters. He's about you. He's all about you. You are God's delight. You are his precious thing. Um, God explodes in song and dance when he thinks of you. He's that. He's like so smitten. Uh, and you can read this in Zephaniah um, 3:16 through 18. It says, Adonai, which means Lord. Your God is in your midst, a mighty savior. He will delight over you with joy. He will quiet you with his love. He will dance for joy over you with singing. See, that's just God explodes over you and how he feels about you. And that is for you, right? He delights over you. And I love that he quiets you with his love. So what might he be quieting? Well, maybe those stinking inner critics that are tearing you upside down one side, the other, maybe, you know, uh, maybe, maybe it's fear. Maybe it's a sense I'm not enough. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe, blah, 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 you know, or maybe I'm too much, whatever. I just, Oh, honey, just come here. Let me just quiet you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's just really crazy thinking. <laughs> quiet you with your love, with his love, right? Because love does quiet us because we're rooted and grounded in something that's solid and bigger than us and taking care of us. And as he quiets us with his love, well, then we're able sometimes to quiet ourselves with love, right? Because we're made to love, uh, not just other people, but ourselves, right? And God, of course, right? So it becomes a win-win. Listen, if you want to contribute to humanity, you allow the Lord to minister to places where you're not valuing yourself. Now, we're not talking about a narcissistic, puffed up, forget that noise. God will be after that like a duck on a June bug. He's not into this, you know, prideful crap, okay? But, um in the place where we're feeling less than, inadequate, inferior. Oh, he's after that too. See, humility says what God says. It doesn't puff up, which is pride. Okay. But it doesn't, um, but it, but you're not, you're not inferior. It's exactly where you need to be. And you could rest and you can relax and you can get your eyes off, um, off all these cr- stuff inside here. That's crazy. <laughs> And you can authentically love one another and help one another, right? And of course, love God, right? So, um, you know, so obviously I'm speaking more to the women or the men that suffer from, you know, um, lower self-confidence, lower self-esteem, that kind of thing that has been a a struggle where we're not quite sure our value um, you know, if, if on the other hand, you're narcissistic and you've just got this, like your head can't fit in the door, well, God's going to be after that puppy too, because that's not who you are either. You're created in the image and likeness of love and love does not puff up. Love builds up, right? Anyway, I hope this has been a blessing for you today. Uh, 
spend some time. Spend some time with the Lord, letting him quiet with you, quiet you with his love, letting him dance over you and sing over you and break out and raucous, um, uh, twirling, spinning, dancing, which is really what that word, uh, the, the dancing is that type of dancing. He's like just unhinged with uh, his excitement and his delight. And you spend some time. It will minister to you. It will heal your heart. Um, have him confront the lies um, that maybe you have been believing. You know, I have a bunch of resources on my website if that's helpful. I wrote a book, Mark by Love, that'll help you a lot with all of that. Um, and all on Amazon, or you can go to my website, katherinetune.com. Uh, but spend some time. That is your place of greatest contribution when you get that settled. And then you can be free to fulfill your, your, the purposes that he has planned for, but you're not going to do it if you, if you're uh, not valuing what he values. And then we can truly value one another. We need to see ourselves through the eyes of love and see one another through the eyes of love. And that's only possible when we let love do what he does so well. Anyway, I hope this has been a blessing. Um, I want to thank Brother Henry for uh, uh, allowing me to uh, be on your show. Uh, everybody uh, hit, hit like, subscribe to uh, Henry. And um, uh, he is a huge blessing. So I just wanted to give a shout out uh, to you, Brother Henry. I love you. And I love everyone watching. You guys have an amazing day. Bye-bye. We hope you have enjoyed today's program. We want to connect with you. Visit us at facebook.com slash the Brother Henry and You Show. Or visit us on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Henry Harris 100. We're so grateful you tuned in today and hope you have a fantastic day.